Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I'm going to be going over one of my favorite movies. This is, to me, um, a cult classic. It is iconic. It's a mean girl, bitchy movie. It is inspired by Heathers, and it is called Jawbreaker, and it stars Tatum from Scream, and the actress is Rose McGowan, and um, I love her. I think she's awesome. She was, like, the typical 90s awesome, like, just go-to girl or like the cool best friend or like the mean bitchy girl in this case for the movie and uh, I definitely love her and this is such a fun film. I actually studied under the guy who wrote and directed this movie, Darren Stein, at the Los Angeles Film School where I got my bachelor's degree and um, this is such a fun movie. It's from my childhood. I remember having it on VHS. Um, and uh, it definitely has a murder mystery aspect. Uh, uh, it's 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 such a great movie. If you guys haven't seen it, you definitely need to check it out. Um, these girls accidentally kill their best friend on her birthday, trying to play a prank, and they try to cover up the murder, and it's just, it's awesome. Um, and so with all of that being said, I think we should get right into Jawbreaker. So we open up with the beautiful ones, the, the fabulous four. Um, and it's, uh, oh my God, Judy Greer is in this movie uh, as well. And so is Rebecca Gayhart. Uh, so many great names. And uh, Marilyn Manson uh, makes an appearance. Uh, it's just such a fun, iconic 90s film for me. Um, we open up with uh, that voiceover and it's Liz Purr on her birthday, getting abducted by these people and getting a jawbreaker shoved down her throat and putting in a, a trunk. And then we find out quickly that it's her girlfriends and they're, playing a prank on her and they're gonna kidnap her and take her to her favorite restaurant and give her pancakes. But when they get there and open up the trunk, they discover that she chokes on the jawbreaker and has suffocated to death and has been dead in the back of the trunk the entire drive to the restaurant. And they get really scared and they don't know what to do, so they leave her there and they go and uh, they go into school and they, oh my goodness, that's one of the best iconic parts of this movie is the iconic strut down the hallway with the song, You Who. And um, I don't know if it, I'm pretty sure it's written for this uh, uh, movie. Uh, the music video is awesome as well. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. I said that so many times now already, but it's what inspired like Scream Queens and so many other countless things. It's just so perfect in so many different ways. The music, the outfits, um, the production design, uh, everything kind of pops and I kind of love the feel of it. There's a lot of iconic one-liner scenes like the pre-lunch touch-ups and it just feels like a really fun girl movie, but it also has that, um, you know, a feel that uh, other people get, get, in, get into as well. But I happen to love that whole like lipstick, sticky makeup, just like fabulous, like clicky girls who are like mean as fuck and could like shred you to shit. Um, I've always just had a thing for that. We get to the part wherever they're trying to take her body back and frame it up in bed to say that she was raped. They came up with this idea that to kind of get the blood off of their hands, they are going to frame like she was attacked in her house by a guy. And that goes wrong whenever they forget to pick up her assignments and the teacher sends Judy Greer's character, Fern Mayo, over and she overhears everything. That's one of the best parts also. Uh, another good part is the way that they go about trying to coax Fern into not saying anything and just the manipulation. Um, Courtney Shane is able to deliver such a beautiful uh, spoken monologue to Fern to try to manipulate her and seduce her and convince her with to this lifestyle, you know, not saying anything. You're really trying to cover everything that they did up, even though it was an accident, you know, they're not trying to go to jail for what had happened. So I think it's kind of cool how they like socially bribe her and they give her a makeover and turn her into this new, like take Liz's place. Like you can be the next one of us. So we have a lot of fun um, learning the rules of like the lunch table scene and Violet trying to uh, figure out who she is and Courtney kind of giving her a name and coming up with some rules. One of my favorite parts is wherever she says, if ever you get a black rose, you must destroy it immediately along with the sender. Emotionally, of course, it's not like we kill people on purpose. And it's just, the writing of this movie is so uh, quick-witted and awesome, I love it. You know, whenever they're talking about, oh my God, Liz is in the back of this car and she is dead. Do you know what that means? And one of the other friends goes, it means you're a shoo for prom queen? Oh my God, ridiculous. 
Another one of my favorite iconic lines is when she goes, reality check. Liz is in the trunk of this car, dead. And that is a sad, fucked up thing, but you are gonna strut your shit down the hallway like everything is peachy fucking keen. Got that? There are so many one-liners in this that I absolutely just love. It's such a fun movie and it keeps you guessing and going about like what's gonna happen and it has that, you know, kind of mystery element into it because of the murder that happened. So it's it's more than just like a fun teeny boppy girl movie. Like Mean Girls is awesome, but this is, the stakes are up. Like, you know, it's like, I could see how like this could ease people into horror movies if they're younger or they're kind of squeamish um, or if ever, um, I don't want to sound typical, but like if ever like some guys want to introduce their girlfriends to some horror movies, this would be a great way to be like, here's some aspects about death and killing and interesting characters and sometimes we like people who are a little crazy. That's a good segue into this next part that I want to talk about is Courtney Shane. She is brilliant. She is ruthless. She is crazy. She is awesome. She is what you talk about when you think about that like typical mean bitch character that could just take down anyone. What they refer to her in this movie as is Satan in heels and I think that couldn't be betterly said. Um, I love the Rose's portrayal of her and Rose is just so beautiful and everything that they were able to bring to this picture was so awesome. Um, I love all of the different like high school social uh, like the hierarchy of like the people and like all of like the weird kids who have like purple and blue hair. Um, I, oh my goodness, just the, the style typically because it being 90s and having such like, uh, the hair is on point and just everything about this movie is so perfect and it's just such a good feel good film to me. Um, I put this on a lot and I enjoy uh, being able to just like kind of relate to Courtney and like want to cheer her on. Um, but it's also good that she like gets what comes to her at the end. So pretty much she's threatening to blackmail everyone and get away with uh, the plans. And she ends up framing a guy uh, to make it look like he ended up uh, sexually assaulting Liz. Um, so she has got all of this going on and it seems like she's about to get away with it. But uh, unbeknownst to anybody, she accidentally recorded herself um, on one of those cards that opens up and you can record something and then uh, it'll play back whenever the person who receives the card gets it and it's kind of fun. Uh, Courtney didn't realize she was holding it whenever she confessed, yes, it was me. I killed Liz the teen dream, okay? Deal with it. Like, there's nothing we can do about it. She confessed and recorded it and when Julie ends up with that confession, uh, she goes to the prom and she pretty much gets what's coming to her. There are so many parts of this film that I love, like just like the uh, the grunge kind of feel that it has to it, like the music, um, the pacing is fun, but it still feels uh, really high school and uh, like, a, like a teen movie. Um, but it also still feels, like I said, serious because of it being kind of in the edgier part of content. And if you think about all of the other great things that like people from this movie have done, um, Rose was in Scream as Tatum, uh, Rebecca Gayhart was in Urban Legend, and uh, Judy Greer is Karen in the newest Halloween trilogy. Um, it just is a lot of iconic horror people that I know, so it's a really fun film. Um, the way that there's a lot of uh, connections to some other horror movies is fun. Uh, like, there's a lot of Carrie vibes. Um, there was some Halloween vibes as well, sometime when they're like walking down the streets and the external shots that they have and stuff. Um, it, it's that perfect, like, eerie film, and I just love things that make me feel like this. And then when we get to the final showdown where, um, you know how, like, Carrie's up and she gets announced as prom queen and then they dump the blood on her. So essentially it's a play on that, but, like, Courtney gets announced as prom queen and she has her moment and she thinks she's on top of the world. And over the loudspeakers, her confession of, I killed the teen dream, starts shouting out. And she's shocked and people are like, it's a fun shot because there's slow motion and people are like, that bitch. And they start throwing the corsages at her and like beating her up and she's like running out of the gym. And it's perfect. They uh, were able to get her karma and not be able to be blackmailed anymore. Um, I love how Rebecca Gayhart goes and blows her a kiss and says, eat shit. And it's perfect. Um, there are so many uh, amazing 
things about this movie I could just go on and on and on and on forever, um, but I won't. What I will say though is another one of the things I like about the music you score part is uh, how it makes you feel like there it's it's got this like like dreamy fantasy feel to it and then it also has like really good pacing when like the tension is high and the girls are kind of like having a uh, bitchy back and forth combat with each other um, when the stakes are just rising and each one's trying to get a leg up on the other one. Um, I love movies like this. I love all of this kind of genre stuff. Um, Heathers and Scream Queens I definitely plan to get into. This is like my ideal era of stuff. Scream, Halloween, and this stuff is, is I go nuts over it. It's, it's unbelievably good to me. I can just consume content like this. One of the reasons why the chemistry works is because of the three main girls. And I love the, I love whenever there's like a dynamic of three girls like that and how they can play off of each other. Um, we love Marcy because she's like the fun blonde one. Um, and she says some like the fun ditzy stuff, but she's also really good at jabbing in there too. Um, and Courtney is the main brains behind the thing, the Satan in heels, and she can just, like I said, shred anyone to anything. And uh, Julie is fun because she's kind of the moral compass of the film, and she kind of, we're, we're essentially her eyes. There's, there's several eyes of the movie, but we, we, we morally feel like her, and we follow her and what she would do and go through things, and as things are happening for her, she kind of figures out what to do and then we have uh fern slash violet and uh she's that the new girl character the makeover character that kind of like gets too much power and takes over and i just love dynamics from things like this uh they all play it so well and i love all of their lines they deliver them so perfectly i could just like i said sit here and go on another one of my favorite lines is i'll fucking shred you whore like it's it, it's awesome, um, and I I can't wait to be able to go over Heather's because it's it's completely up the same lane. This is the DVD that I own. Um, I just got this recently, but when I was younger, I did have it on VHS, and it was fun because it was a white tape, but it was kind of it was like painted like how these Jawbreakers are on here. Um, but this is just like a basic DVD. I don't have the Blu-ray. I don't have the Blu-ray version. Um, and here's what it looks like on the inside. Just a fun little, you know, disc set. Uh, perfect to add to my collection, gotta have it. It's in there right next to Scream Queens and Heathers, I'm not lying. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought about this film if you've seen it. If you haven't, uh, check it out. Um, I hope you didn't watch all of this, you know, um, and spoil the movie. I would really hope that uh, if you hadn't, you'd ch go check it out first. But Definitely one of my favorites. I think it's a cult classic. I wish it had more recognition. I wish more people knew about it. I think I think it's on Shudder right now. If you guys have not seen this movie, please, please go check it out. Uh, please go check it out on Shudder. Um, it's just so fun. It's so perfect. You won't regret it. You'll have a good time with it. Show it to your girlfriend. Show it to your kids if you want to introduce them to horror. Uh, well, maybe not your kids. What year? Well, if they're like 14 or 15, I don't know, whatever. Coming up, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Chris Snyder. Um, I kind of reached out to him because I think he's cool and fun, and it was kind of like the first time I felt comfortable reaching out to another uh, person on YouTube. So upcoming in January, we're going to be streaming and watching the first Child's Play movie from 1988. That's going to be fun. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of that franchise after that. I don't have plans, don't ask me. Uh, but so far that's what I have coming up. Um, also, I might join him for his 500 sub viewing party. Um, and then another thing that I could be coming having up is a collaboration with Good Real Hunting. They asked me to be part of their like Star Wars Saturdays going on in January. And they asked me to be a part of either episode two or eight. And I love eight. I would defend it all day long, but that's a hard vote for me because pe I can't I can't have people hate on the things that I love so much. Um, so I chose two because I figured that would just be an easier road and Padme is like my favorite character. Anyway, so those are just gonna be some of the things that I have coming up. Uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos if you haven't seen them. I've done a bunch of different genres and I plan to do a bunch more. Um, and uh, stick around for whenever I post something new and thanks for watching.